my name is Ali Reza Parande, or Ali. Uh, I'm originally from Iran. I started uh, studying Masters of Engin Mechanical Engineering at the University of Sheffield from Foundation Year. And um, I'm currently just finished, I just graduated now, and just going to work for, uh, for Atkins in September. So when I first started applying for uh, jobs, just summer placements even, uh, I didn't have like a really good CV, it was kind of blank, so I, I knew that I had to like uh, build up my CV from scratch. So I started doing like volunteering stuff. So uh, I participated in Skills for Work certificate and did a, a bit of volunteering as well as bar work. So one of the things I knew was I needed some relevant engineering experience. So when I was back in my own Hong Kong country, I uh, tried to like find contacts to get like a, a small summer placement, even if it was two months. So I worked for uh, EPP, which is Electro Parak Paya, on their mold design section to uh, learn about a bit about like CATIA, design mold software. So designing molds and seeing like how molds are manufactured and how they go into use for production of like electric components. This year I founded my own society in graphic design, which I think was one of the main reasons I managed to uh, get a graduate role because it was kind of related to what I do. I also became president of Persian society. So I did a little bit of society work there. Uh, and then a year after I joined Isaac, that's where I got most of my skills from because it's kind of really enterprise oriented, business oriented. Uh, yeah. They work on sending and bringing exchange students in the UK and like they teach you a lot of training skills. So I also basically participated in graduate award uh, since my second year. So I was like gathering evidence and everything. So that's one of the things that helped me as well because I had like uh, basically everything on my mind and in my portfolio when I'm going to interviews. I think it's because basically uh, like just how you go to gym, you have like a, a special a special like calendar for yourself. Like you want to go like Thursday, Fridays. I also had like a, a basically a regime for myself. Basically I apply for a job each day, but only one job. Uh, and so like each week, so I apply for like four, three to four jobs, but like I make sure that these are very, very perfect applications. I also use an app called Days Left to basically put all the deadline of jobs in it. So it basically would tell me like how many days are left for deadline of each application. So to make sure that I apply for that, for, uh, for the jobs I want, I prioritize which jobs I want to apply first. That's how I learned the pattern basically, like what kinds of things makes me re get rejected in like application processes. And I knew the biggest hurdles was in the first and second stages where you get passed through a lot of filters, uh, especially with big companies that have like psychometric tests, application stage. Uh, that's why basically I made sure that I perfect these stages. So when I get to the interview stage, I knew that I'm kind of good in that stage just because of my past experiences. One of the things I did was I attended a career service presentation on prior two visas. And one of the things was that the kind of requirements they needed. So they, the career service gave me a lot of information about the kind of things companies require. They don't need to get you like a um, residence labor test if you're graduating in the UK. And also the other thing was that you, you shouldn't need to pass any security clearance. Like for example, when I wanted to apply for like a company like Backway International, I found that like the work required security clearance, so that maybe actually not to apply to them because it was just a waste of time in my application. It wouldn't yeah. be considered. So like these kind of things uh, allowed me to prioritize which companies are still big enough to have a certificate of sponsorship and also to be able to support me. Also, like one of the things was I also downloaded like a list of uh, certified sponsored companies of the UKBA website. Uh, UK government website has like a list of, sp of sponsored yeah. companies that have tired to you. And basically any company I wanted to apply to, I basically searched the company in that list to see if they have the certification. When I was applying at first, I applied to like any kind of opportunity I found. And I would still get rejected a lot because I didn't know like which industry I wanted to work in or like what kind of job I wanted. So one of the things I started to do was asking myself questions like why I got rejected. And then I uh, basically found that basically if I was to start a job on the day one, would I like what I was going to do or like uh, how much competition would I have regarding this job? So if I'm like sitting in an interview for like a company that has only six graduate roles, versus like 300 applicants who are getting interviewed, will I have enough chance to get that job? So for example, Atkins, um, they have like 400 intake, graduate intakes per year. So like there's a lot of chance for you to get in compared to like a very small medium company that have like 
uh, five graduate roles versus like 300 applicants for each role. So you need to, I kind of did like a probability analysis to find which companies would more students apply to, which companies more wouldn't apply to. So for example, uh, aerospace industry gets a lot of applications from graduate engineers, especially UK, EU students who uh, are more preferred than international students in terms of visas because visas cost companies. So companies prefer, prefer UK, EU students because they don't have to pay for a tier two visa for them. So in terms of that, I found that, uh, for example, reading industry news, um, that rail industry lacks a lot of engineers compared to aerospace industry. And um, a lot of companies are willing to actually get you tier two visa to hire you in that sector. And I also made sure that I like the industry by taking a mechanical engineer of railways module. So I kind of, when I took that module, I really liked the variety of like technical skills you gained in it. And like, so I basically found that my, in my interest matches the job requirements as well as uh, the competition is not very tough in there. Yeah, so I used Carcare Save, especially during my final year a lot. Uh, I used it for borrowing books on psychometric tests for interviews. So they have a lot of great collections in terms of like books on psychometric tests and interviews. I also used it a lot for uh, some of the applications I wanted to ch get checked, my CV especially. So every I, my CV went through like a couple of uh, design reviews during this stage. And so I, if I wouldn't have made come to the career service, my CV would look really cluttered. <laughs> so after my career service visit, I made sure which items on my CV I have to prioritize. And uh, so basically my first page was all technical compared to the second page. So uh, these stuff I learned from career service CV guidance. Also one or two applications that meant really a lot to me, I basically get them checked. So like cover letters or anything, I get them yeah. checked before supplying. And um, in my final stage, when I get to the psychometric tests, I used like a books from career service. And uh, especially near them, when I got two job offers, it was really delicate point for me because you need to decline one of them. And it's very delicate, it's very delicate part because you need to make sure that you don't burn any bridges. So that's where career service helped me as well. When you have like other assessment centers and stuff, so how you decline them and everything. I think the biggest challenge was basically pointing down what companies are most suited for me and also what companies uh, would have the ability to be able to get me a visa, for example, as well as getting past the first two stages of applications because that's very hard and like most of the people that apply, they don't get any responses of employers because usually the way the systems work is that if you don't get past the psychometric test, the application doesn't get viewed by an HR yeah. uh, employee. So I think one of the things they should do is they use that app to basically point down all their deadlines and their jobs they want to apply for. They prioritize which jobs they want to apply for and like it doesn't matter how many jobs they apply to it. What matters is that they have to perfect the application before applying to them. So one of the things my friends I did mistake that the mistake they did was uh, they just sent like a kind of generic application just so that they get to that psychometric stage and like just to try to pass the psychometric stage but like when they passed the psychometric stage the application was not really good and like the HR employee basically they rejected the application at that stage although like if they if they had a, like a perfect application at that stage they could pass that um, they could go to the interview stage and usually when you go about to that stages it's usually very high chance that you can get a job yeah, yeah. because they usually like you to invite you for interview and like pay for your expenses to go there and like do assessment center so if you could do it enough to get to that stage then uh, you should be confident like try your best to basically pass the stage which is not very hard as well have like a calendar just like how you go to gym you make a calendar for yourself and like use this calendar to make sure to apply for jobs as soon as possible because there is less competition this way